Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use many-to-many -many relationships in Microsoft Access. Many-to-many -many relationships are useful whenever you've got a bunch of stuff on the left and a bunch of stuff on the right, and you need to relate them together. Employees to certifications, for example. Many employees to many certifications. Each employee can have multiple certifications, and each certification can be taken by multiple employees. Students to classes, for example. Each student can be enrolled in multiple classes. Each class can have multiple students. I'll show you how to set up a junction table to create that many-to-many -many relationship. Today's question comes from Lucas in Anchorage, Alaska, one of my Platinum members. Lucas says, I need to track employee training when they took the certification test and when their certification expires. I need a list of which employees have certifications expiring soon so that I can send them for retesting. I'm having trouble matching up the employee to the certification. Can you help? Of course, Lucas. In order to do this and do it properly, you have to know how to do something called many-to-many -many relationships. Let me explain. First of all, if you're not familiar with one-to-many relationships, that's the basic relationship type and access, then go watch this video, my relationships video. Get a good understanding for how one-to-many relationships work. Pause this video if you have to and come back to it later, but definitely make sure you watch that video first. A one-to-many relationship is the relationship that most people are familiar with. Customer to orders, right? One customer places multiple orders. Manufacturer to products. For example, Ford is the only one that makes the Taurus, and they make multiple different types of cars, but they all come from one manufacturer. Supervisor to employees, okay? Drivers to vehicles. One of the examples I like to use in my full class, customers to vehicles, right? Joe Smith here owns three different cars, all right? A Taurus, a Focus, and an Escort. So that's a one-to-many relationship, right? One owner to multiple vehicles. And here's how you'd set it up in Access, right? We've got our driver table, a driver ID, first name and last name. Then we have a vehicle table with a vehicle ID, right? One is that particular car, two is that particular car, the Camaro. And here's the driver, all right? So you could see here, driver one, Rick Ross, that's me. I own two cars, okay? Sue, or, uh, Joe Smith here, number two, owns that Dodge Ram. And Sue Jones owns the Hyundai Sonata. Okay, so that's a one-to-many relationship. One driver, multiple vehicles. Now, a many-to-many -many relationship is a little more complicated, but that's what you need in this situation. Employees to certifications, right? Multiple employees to multiple certifications. Think of it like this. It goes both ways, right? Each employee can have multiple certifications, and each certification can be had by multiple employees. All right, students to classes. A student may enroll in multiple classes, and each class will have multiple students, hopefully. Now, books to authors and songs to artists, traditionally you'd think one to many, right? But, especially lately, a song can have multiple collaborators on it, right? Nowadays you hear, though, okay, this song by this artist, this artist, and this artist. Well, if you want a database to know all of the artists that are on a song or which songs belong to this artist, you need a many-to-many -many relationship. It's not just one. Unless you want to create a new record that's got, you know, three artists in it as one. But that's, that's not the right way to do it, okay? Products to vendors. Now, a minute ago, I talked about manufacturers for cars, right? No one else makes a Ford Taurus. But if you're buying stuff from different vendors, right, if you get books from, let's say, Amazon and Barnes & Noble and other bookstores, okay, the product might be a book. That book might be available from multiple vendors. And sometimes it's handy to keep a table where you get the pricing from each of your vendors so you can pick the lowest one, right? So each product to multiple vendors, each vendor, of course, will have multiple products. Then we got drivers to vehicles again, all right? I thought you just said that was a one-to-many relationship. Well, if you're talking about ownership, usually, yeah, you got one owner to a vehicle. All right, and an owner can have multiple vehicles. But if you're talking about drivers and you're talking about a company, you might have a fleet of cars and a bunch of drivers. Okay, Joe Smith might drive these two cars. 
on any given day, he might take a different car out. Okay, see I've got an employee ID here, 101, 102, 103. There's Joe Smith. There's the cars. They've got their own ID. All right, what we have to do is set up something called a junction table to form the many-to-many -many relationship. It's a third table, and that's going to link them together. Okay, Joe Smith can drive cars one and three. Okay, Bill Jones, 102, can drive cars two and three. Sam Price just drives car one. This is what you need for your certifications. You'll have a list of employees, a list of certifications, and then a table to bring them together. That's your junction table, right? Here's my drivers, my vehicles, and the junction table over here. Okay, driver one, Rick Rost, right? Driver one, one has vehicles one and two. All right, same thing for your certifications, right? This guy is certified on this class and this class. And in your junction table, that's where you'll put information on the certification itself, the day they took the certification test, the date that it expires. Anything pertaining to that certification instance will go in the junction table. Let me show you how you set it up in Access. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy of it off my website if you want. I'll put a link down below in the templates section. But in here, I've already got a customer table with a bunch of people in it. So we'll pretend that these are the employees that need training. All right, we'll say customers are signing up for training classes. All right, we've got a customer ID, and we've got a first name and a bunch of other information. That is meaningless for this class, but this is what we need here. All right, so we got customers, Okay. Now we need to set up a table to track the certifications. All right, so create table design. Let's say this is a list of courses. All right, they have to certify in a particular course. Okay, so course ID, and we'll make that our auto number, the course name. That'll be a short text, and then whatever notes you want to put in there, All right, long text. If you want to put other information that pertains to this course, like a syllabus or the instructor ID or any of that stuff, you can put that in this table as well. But I'm just going to save this control S as my course T. All right, let's go in and put some information in here. What are the different courses that our employees have to certify in? Well, there's always Star Trek 101. They've got to take that. They've got to take Microsoft access basics okay you gotta take the basics um any good starfleet captain has to take the kobayashi maru if you're not a trekkie you won't know what that is look it up google it <laughs> gotta be certified and no cheating okay we've got vulcan logic with spock okay and so on so these are a list of all of our courses or certifications or whatever you want to call them okay it doesn't matter now, how do I bring together my courses with my customers? All right, each customer is going to enroll in a course. Well, that's where the junction table comes in. All right, I'm going to leave these like this so we can see them. All right, let me slide these over here like that so we can see both of them on the screen at the same time. Let me close that menu. Okay, let's create another table, create table design. Okay. Now, we need an auto number. I like to have an auto number in every table, whether you think you're going to use it or not. It doesn't always have to have a meaningful name. We can just call it ID. All right, we're going to name this table my customer course junction table, all right, or customer course T, or whatever you want to call it, junction table if you're only going to have one, but I guarantee you'll have more than one in your database. Once you learn how to do this, you'll be making all kinds of many-to-many -many relationships because they're really cool. Okay, now in here, you put the information about this relationship itself. You're going to have a customer ID. That's going to be a number of type long integer. Remember, from our one-to-many class, right, our basic relationships, that's the foreign key. Okay, customer ID is a primary key in a different table. It's the primary key of the customer table. But in this table, this is where you're relating it to. This is a foreign key. So it's a number of type long integer. Same thing with the course ID. That's also a number of type long integer, right? Primary key, and I'll actually click the button this time. I never click the button. I always let access do it for me. Primary key, foreign key, foreign key, right? They're coming in from both sides. You can also put stuff in here that is meaningful for this relationship itself. For example, 
uh, date enrolled, right? The date they actually enrolled in the class. We can default that to today's date if you want to. Okay. And then the date certified, right? What date did they get their certification? And then certification expires another date time. You can put all those information in there. Whatever else you want to. All right. What class they or what building they took the class in, whatever, how much they paid, anything related to this particular instance of them taking this class or this particular certification. Save this as customer. Sometimes you can go customer X course. If you want to do that, I'm just going to go customer course T. I've seen it both ways. Okay. Save that. There's your junction table. Let's put some data in it. Now, you can do this all with forms and stuff. You don't have to work directly with the tables. In fact, it's preferable not to work directly with tables. All right. And in the extended cut, I'm going to run through for the members actually setting this up with forms. All right. But for you guys, I'm just going to give you the gist. Okay. Here we go. Now, how do we put this information here? How do we track this stuff? Actually, I need to see the uh, course ID over here, don't I? There we go. Okay. So first person, first student, right? First customer, me. I sign up for the Kobayashi Maru on this date. Haven't been certified yet. Okay. All right. Next person, Deanna Troy, three. She wants to sign up for Vulcan Logic with Mr. Spock. All right. She signed up on 210. She got certified on 215. And her certification expires on uh, 315. Maybe it's the one month you expired. Okay. I come back for another class. This is me. This time I sign up for uh, the Vulcan Logic class also because Deanna's taking it. Haha, <laughs> right? So <laughs> I also sign up on 215. All right, got, I, I enrolled in the same class, got certified on 215. All right, but I paid for the longer uh, certification, so mine doesn't expire until then. All right, so you get the point now. This is how you set up your data. All right, Captain Picard comes in. He signs up for Star Trek 101 on 2.8. Okay, so now you can see here, here's my list of customers, here's my list of courses, right? The enroll date, the date they got certified, and the certification expires. Let me open that up so you can see that. Certification expires. So that's how you set everything up. Now you've got all the information you need stored in your database to be able to get a list of who has certifications expiring on what days, what classes they've taken, what certifications they've gotten. And now in the extended cut, I'll show you how to set up forms to make all this information easier to work with. Want to learn more about many-to-many -many relationships? In the extended cut for members, silver members and up, I'm going to show you how to build the forms necessary to work with this data, make it a whole lot easier. We're going to go both ways. We're going to build a customer form where you can see the customer and the courses that that customer signed up for, okay? Then we'll go the other way and build a course form and see all the students, the customers, that are enrolled in that course. All right, so you can use a many-to-many -many relationship and go both ways with it. Then we'll do some nifty little programming, right? I'll make a little double-click event so you can double-click on the certified date. That means they took the class today. And then it will set today's date in there and make the expiration date one year in the future. And then we'll do an after update event. So if you change this, right, if you change the certified date, let's say you're entering in stuff from last week, all right, it will automatically update the expiration date to be one year past that. Then we'll build the actual query that Lucas was looking for, right? Here's a list of customers, what course they signed up for, and when it expires. And I made this so it shows every certification that is expired or will be expiring in the next 30 days. Okay, and that's all covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my previous extended cut videos as well. We've got over 100 tech help videos, and we're getting close to 100 extended cuts too. So there's tons and tons of information, and it's all for my silver members and up. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. 
These are the full-length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.